Welcome to this week's Empowered Living. I'm your host, Kenny Collier. Thank you for joining me as we continue to look at, look at how science confirms the Bible. This week I want to take a look at, did humans really evolve from ape-like creatures? Because this is the crux of Darwinian evolution. Eventually, as molecules change into uh, man, at some point, the common ancestor said to be between ape and man is an ape-like creature. And so, we need to look at the, the biblical starting points and the evolutionary starting points. See, Christians who uncritically accept evolution as God's way of creating, they still try to somehow elevate the origin of man, or at least his soul, above that of other beasts. Evolutionists attempt to soften the blow by assuring us that man didn't exactly evolve from apes, but rather from some kind of ape-like creature. As if that makes it better. But this is just semantics, just wordplay. As many of the presumed ape like ancestors evolutionists say we evolved from, uh, they are actually apes. The much touted human ancestor, and of course you can't see it, but I'm saying in quotes here, commonly known as Lucy, for example, has the scientific name of Australopithecus afarensis, meaning this southern ape from the Afar Triangle of Ethiopia. So even all the scientific names given to our ancestors have the word ape in them, which is Pithecus. What does the Bible say about the origin of man? And what exactly does the scientific evidence the evolutionists claim of our ape ancestry? Well, starting from the Bible, we know that God tells us on the same day that he made all animals that walk on the earth. That's the sixth day. He created man separately and he created man in his own image with the intent that man would have dominion over every other living thing on the earth in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 through 28. From this it is clear there is no animal that is man's equal uh, and certainly not one that is man's ancestor. When God then paraded all the animals in front of Adam for him to name, uh, it wasn't all the animals, but he paraded the animals, the beasts of the field, he found none that were a help for him. Genesis confirmed, I'm sorry, then Jesus confirmed this uniqueness of men and women when he declared that marriage is to be between a man and a woman because from the beginning of creation God made them male and female. That's Jesus in Mark chapter 10 verse 6. This leaves no room for pre-humans or for billions of years of cosmic evolution prior to man's appearance on the earth. Adam chose the very name Eve, meaning the mother of all living, because he recognized that this was what her role would be. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 20. In contrast, the starting point of evolution begins with the assumption that man has, in fact, evolved from apes. No paleoanthropologist, that's a big science word, but that's those who study fossil evidence for man's origin, would dare to seriously ask this question, did man evolve from apes? The only question they're allowed to ask is from which apes did they evolve from? Since evolutionists generally do not believe that men evolved from any ape that is now alive, they look to the fossils of humans and apes to provide them with their evidence. Specifically, they look for anatomical features that look like they're intermediate in between those of apes and men. Fossil apes that have these features that are intermediate between man and apes are called hominids. Living apes, however, those that are still alive that we can see and interact with here on the earth today, are not called hominids, but rather they're called hominoids because they are only similar to humans but did not evolve into humans. Now this is the problem because almost all the fossil evidence they find, living apes also have. But yet they want to draw the distinction of a hominid and a hominoid and tell you that a hominid is a fossil that can turn into a human, but a hominoid is not, it's just an ape. Again, it's just semantics. There are many similar similarities between uh, living apes and humans. But the only historical evidence is that which can be used to support the ape ancestry, and it must come from fossils. But, however, there's a problem with this. The fossil record of men and apes is very, very sparse. 95% of all known fossils are marine invertebrates. 4.7% of fossils are plants. 0.2%, that means 2 out of every 100 fossils, are insects and other invertebrates. That leaves 0.1%. That leaves 1 out of every 100 fossils, bones, ever found to be that of vertebrates. Those things with backbones like apes and like humans. And only the smallest percentage, imaginable fraction of that 1%, 
consist of primates. That is humans, that is apes, that is monkeys, that is lemurs. They can all fit into the back of a pickup truck. Because of the rarity, those who specialize in the evolution of man, they've never even actually ever seen an original hominid fossil, one that supposedly evolved into a human. Few of them have even had the opportunity to see a cast of them. They write their scientific papers based on just measurements and dimensions given by other scientists or by photos that they have seen. Since there is a lot of prestige in finding an ancestor of man rather than an ancestor to a living ape, or worse yet, an ape that's merely just gone extinct, there's a lot of pressure on these paleoanthropologists to declare almost any fossil of an ape that they found to be a hominid, some kind of ape creature ancestor, instead of just a fossil of a living ape or an extinct ape. In fact, living apes are, are left to find the fossils of their ancestors to themselves. Many students now in our schools are taught uh, human evolution, and a lot of times they're taught it in social studies class, and they're taught by teachers who have very little knowledge of human anatomy and almost zero knowledge of ape anatomy. It is useless for us then to consider the fossil evidence um, for the evolution of man from apes without first understanding just some basic anatomical and functional differences between human and ape skeletons. And I want to take the remainder of the time in this session to go over some of these before we debunk and look into all of the supposedly quote-unquote ape-like ancestors like Lucy, like the Nebraska man that um, scientists have supposedly found. So if we look first at the jaws and teeth between an ape and a human. Teeth and jaw fragments, they are the most frequently found primate fossils. Much of the evidence for the ape ancestry of man is based on the similarities between our teeth and jaws and apes' teeth and jaws. Apes, they tend to have very large incisors and canine teeth that are larger than their molars. Ape teeth usually have very thin enamel. That's the hardest part of the tooth. However, humans, we have very thick enamel. Finally, the jaws of apes, they're more U-shaped in structure, and ours are more parabolic. The problem in declaring a fossil ape to be a human ancestor, in other words, the problem of saying a hominid exists, on the basis of certain human-like features of the teeth, is that some living apes, again, scientists say that living apes can't be our ancestors because they're living apes, they have the same features as those ape-like ape -like ancestors. And they are not considered to be ancestors of man. For example, a living ape is not considered to be an ancestor of man. It is wrong to say we evolved from chimpanzees. No, evolutionists don't say that. They say that chimps and humans have a common ancestor of which they evolved from. For example, modern baboons have relatively small canines and incisors like us compared to their molars. While most apes do have thin enamel, orangutans have thick enamels like we do. Clearly, it is obvious, and any dentist or, or and most biologists will tell you this, that teeth tell us more about an animal's diet and their feeding habits than its supposed evolution. However, thick enamel is probably one of the most commonly cited criteria for declaring an ape fossil to be that of a hominid, one that turned into a human. Even though there are living apes like the orangutan that have thick enamel today. Artistic imagination has been used to illustrate entire ape men, quote unquote ape men, from nothing more than one single tooth. In the early 1920s, the ape man called, uh, forgive me, Hesperopithecus, which only consisted of a single tooth, was pictured in the London Illustrated News from one tooth, complete with the tooth's wife, the tooth's children, domestic animals, and a cave. Experts use this one tooth, known as the Nebraska Man, as proof for human evolution during the Scopes trial in 1925. Now here's the kicker. In 1927, two years after the infamous Scopes trial, other parts of the skeleton to that tooth were discovered, and the Nebraska Man was found to be nothing more than an extinct wild pig. It wasn't even an ape. Another one of the fossils that they use to say um, are hominid, that, that an ancestor of man, are the skulls. The human skull is easily distinguished apart from all living apes, though, however, of course, there are similarities. The vault, the large um, empty space when the brain is absent in the skull, is, is large in the humans because of their relatively large brain compared to apes. Even so, the size of a normal adult human brain can vary up to 
three times fold, threefold. These differences in size of the human brain, however, have nothing to do with intelligence. Adult apes have brains that are generally smaller than even the smallest adult human brain. And of course, they're not even remotely comparable in intelligence. Perhaps the best way to distinguish an ape skull from a human skull is to look at it from the side view. The face of a human is almost nearly vertical uh, up and down while the, the face of an ape slopes forward from its upper face to its chin. Another distinctive feature of the human skull is the nose bone that, that our uh, faces have, that our skulls have as humans. We can rest glasses on them. This doesn't exist in apes. They would have a very difficult time in wearing glasses. Even if you watch movies like X-Men where uh, Beast or whatever is wearing a glass, it just doesn't happen. The most eagerly sought after evidence in any fossil hominid that, that they believe is an ancestor humans is any feature that can suggest that they walked on two legs, bipedal, like we walk on two legs. Humans, we know, obviously, we walk on two legs, and any evidence of, of biped, bipedality or bipedal in fossil apes is considered by evolutionists to be compelling evidence for human ancestry. Bear in mind that the way that an ape walks on two legs is entirely different than the way that man walks on two legs. The distinctive human gait, the way that we walk, requires a complex integration of many skeletal and muscular features in our hips, legs, and feet. Thus, evolutionists, they closely examine the hip bones, the pelvis, the thigh bones, especially the femur, and the leg bones, the tibia and the fibula, and the foot bones of fossil apes in an effort to detect any anatomical features that might suggest that they were bipedal, walked upright. Evolutionists are particularly interested in the angle that the femur and the tibia meet at the knee, and they call this the carrying angle. Humans, you and I, we have a very high carrying angle, and they believe that to be the reason we can walk the way we walk, the bipedal gait that we have. Evolutionists then assume that fossil apes with a very high carrying angle Okay, so see, typically, our angle where our, our femur hits our knee is 9 degrees. Uh, living apes, it's almost 0 degrees. But evolutionists assume that fossil apes with a high-carrying angle, human-like, were bipedal, and thus these evolved into man. However, high-carrying angles are not confined to humans alone. They are also found on some modern apes that walk gracefully on tree limbs. However, they are very clumsy on the ground. Living apes with a high carrying angle that are close to man's include like the orangutan and the spider monkey. Both are very good tree climbers, but they're only capable of ape-like bipedal gait on the ground. The point is that there are living tree-dwelling apes and monkeys with some of the same anatomical features that evolutionists consider to be definitive evidence for bipedality. Yet none of these animals walks like a man, and no one suggests, because they're living apes again, they're hominoids, not hominids. No one is suggesting them to be our ancestors and descendants. So why then do we find ape fossils with a high carrying angle? Why are evolutionists not suggesting that they are fossils of extinct apes or fossils of the orangutan or spider monkey? Why are they not suggesting this? Because there's no prestige in it. Because it doesn't prove the fallible idea that man evolved from an ape-like creature. Now, I'm not done. There are several other one of these examples of ape-like creatures like the Nebraska man I want to get into, but we'll continue that next week, so please join me.